Hey everyone, this is John from UTO. Uh, shout out to Droning On for uh, encouraging me to make this video. So um, yeah, I'm gonna give a quick review of the DJI Osmo Pocket uh, for scuba divers. And that's of course, including this dive housing here. So a little bit about myself. I go on a lot of dives, um, probably 70, to 100 plus dives a year. And I do all sorts of dives, beach dives, boat dives, recently did, recently did some cave diving. Um, I did about almost 40 of those this year. Um, I do technical dives as well. Um, yeah, so all sorts of conditions, all sorts of dives. And whenever I go diving, I always have a action camera with me at all times. And usually that's the GoPro Hero 7 Black. And I have that on a tiny little mount uh, inside and tucked away inside my dry suit pocket. Um, yeah, I just have this with me at all times because you're, you never know what you're gonna see down there. So yeah, but I, I got the DJI Osmo Pocket because I was attracted to the idea of an underwater gimbal um, being able to operate underwater. And I think that has some distinct advantages. Uh, the number one reason being um, stabilization and low light footage when compared to the Hero 7 Black. So if you don't know, the Hero 7 Black uses something called electronic stabilization, which basically crops the um, surrounding edges of the video, like around right, right here. And it basically, um, removes those edges and tries keeping the frame as still as possible. So uh, when it does that in low light footage, it kind of falls apart because it can't quite figure out where the edges are or like where the horizon is. So the electronic stabilization is not quite there for low light footage yet. Uh, it's improving, but it's not quite there yet. Um, and a actual physical stabilization system for low light is actually, um, in theory, should be much better because it's not using any sort of um, uh, algorithm to find the edges of things. It's just kind of stabilizing the footage mechanically, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, some of the pros of using this system, from what I found, is that it has, I mean, like I said before, it actually does have a little bit better um, low light footage, um, specifically at like deeper depths and night, night diving. So yeah, I think it's actually better than the GoPro Hero 7 for low light. Um, I've yet to bring this into a cave, but um, I will um, in the coming months. So when I get back to uh, the cave system, I'll be bringing this in and testing that out. Uh, another thing is that um, some people might like this form factor a little bit better. Um, you don't have to put this onto a, you know, like a pole mount or something like that. Uh, I know a lot of scuba divers do that. Uh, I personally don't do that, but um, if you like a pole mount, um, this could actually replace that because you don't even need it. Yeah, you can just hold it like a flashlight, point it at the thing that you're trying to film, and yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, there's some neutral things about this um, system. And um, one of the things compared to the GoPro Hero 7 Black is that the, the images are more zoomed in. Um, so the GoPro, uh, I'll just pull my Hero 4 over here. The GoPro will basically take in a wide angle uh, view of everything. I believe this is like 120, 130 degrees. And I think the Osmo Pocket is only around, I don't know, like like 90, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that, but um, it's definitely uh, looks much more cropped when compared to the Hero, Hero 7 Black. Uh, but yeah, it's zoomed in. And that could be a pro or a con because for the GoPro, you have to really, really get close to things that you wanna uh, film um, up close. But for the Osmo Pocket, uh, you can just kind of point, point it at something and it could film it um, pretty well from 
like five feet away. So that's pretty good. Um, or it could be bad too. <laughs> uh, another neutral thing I've noticed is that the electronic lens filter, um, specifically for green water is very aggressive. Like, um, it's just so aggressive that, um, like the lights in my, um, in my footage that are normally white are actually red. And I usually see that in like, if I'm color grading, uh, some of my videos, um, like I'll, I'll do that to my videos normally, um, sometimes just to, you know, bring out the whites, um, if they're too green, but, um, this guy does it automatically. So all the footage, um, is very heavily, uh, magenta filtered already. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I'd say the GoPro actually has more true to life colors, um, specifically with their GoPro color profile. Um, I've shot in flat as well, uh, for color grading, but, um, generally leave it on GoPro color now these days with the hero seven black cause they've just gotten so good at that. Um, yeah, so electronic lens filter is very aggressive. Also, I've noticed that the contrast is bumped up, um, within the unit. So, um, you know, straight out of the box, um, I mean, straight out of the card, the footage actually has some chromatic aberration in low light footage. So you might get like these, um, if you don't know what chromatic aberration is, it's like red, uh, flex, red and green flex, kind of like shimmering a little bit, um, in the background kind of looks like, um, uh, it's like one of those old school TVs where it's like the little fuzzy effect. And you can really only see it if you zoom in on like 4K footage. It's I'm kind of being nitpicky about it, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just something to think about. So you, you'd have to look at the 4K footage and really look at like the fine details of things to see that chromatic aberration. But um, I don't know, I'm a picky guy, so I'm gonna talk about that too. <laughs> and another thing about the, um, like a neutral kind of thing um, is that if this thing is actually uh, buoyant underwater. So this housing has a lot of air contained within it, uh, especially when compared to like a Hero 7 Black. There's not that much air uh, around the unit inside. Like there's not a lot of air between the case and the camera. Whereas this guy has a lot of air between the case and the camera. So if you're underwater and you clip it off, it is going to start tilting upwards, even in your pocket. Um, so some people might like that a lot because if they're snorkeling or something and they accidentally let it go, it's just gonna float up to the surface and they can just swim over and catch it. But um, personally, I don't really like that because if I'm at like, I don't know, 170 feet and I see this thing like taken off, I'm not gonna chase it. Uh, up to the surface, I'm just gonna let it go. So yeah, I'm probably gonna do some like, um, maybe some heavy double unders on this bottom part just to prevent it from floating up. Um, yeah, or maybe some like weight modifications. I'm not sure. I'll just have to play around and see. And now we're to the cons of this unit. Um, I actually think it has worse stabilization underwater due to the case. So when you put the camera into this case, it basically locks the gimbal into a fraction of what the gimbal could tilt to. So like on the surface, you know, the gimbal could like tilt all sorts of ways, you know, to stabilize your footage. You can basically go like this and you know, the gimbals, head is going to be rock solid. It's not gonna, you know, skew aside. But inside this thing, in flashlight mode, you can see that the gimbal can't really tilt up or down quite as much because it's kind of locked into this little um, angle over here. So, that means underwater when you're, you know, 
trying hard to keep steady hands. Um, the gimbal is actually going to not uh, counteract those forces of moving up and down and side to side as much. So that actually results in uh, less stage. Um, so you really have to watch your um, trim and uh, be as stable of a platform as possible when filming. Like you really have to, um, it's kind of like what I did with the Hero 4 in terms of keeping my footage as stable as possible because this guy didn't have any electronic stabilization. So I was doing everything manually, uh, basically just, you know, keeping my hands as still as possible and like um, slowing down my heart rate and just trying to, just trying to keep things from moving. But with the Hero 7, uh, this guy is pretty good. So I don't really have to con concentrate quite as much um, about that. Um, and I still get really great footage. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a step back with the Osmo Pocket. And um, I'm gonna be talking about the last con um, about this thing. So one of the biggest problems I see with this um, unit, the camera plus the housing, is this housing. So I have some serious concerns about this housing and its ability to keep water out from the camera. And that's the whole point of this housing, you know, you want to you want to keep your camera alive uh, underwater at all at any cost, really. I mean, that's the whole you're not going to take three hundred dollars and throw it down the drain or uh, however much it costs now. So, yeah, um, if you look inside this unit, um, you see like an O-ring here. And people who are familiar with scuba diving, um, you know, anything you want to waterproof lives and dies by the O-ring, right? The O-ring is the thing that actually keeps the water out of your unit. If you don't have an O-ring, um, it's going to flood. It's going to flood really badly. So, reason why I have a problem with this is that Actually, it's two things. Um, so the O-ring is quite thin. I don't know if you could see that. I'm just filming this off my phone, but the O-ring is quite thin and the surface area that it's coming in contact with to, s to create a seal is also quite thin. Like it's just this little lip right here, keeping all the water out. And it is being pressed against this case like this. And the way it stays in place against that O-ring is this little screw system that pushes down on top of it. So that, that kind of scares me a little bit because like, you know, even though you tighten it quite a bit and it's not really moving, like the second this thing comes loose for whatever reason, this thing, this O-ring is not gonna create a perfect seal anymore. Like it already has room for water to leak in. And you have no way of telling that visually because you think that it's, you know, it's on, but it's actually off. The O-ring is no longer in contact with the case. And I think that's a really big problem. Like there's several things that they could have done to uh, improve this design so that um, you wouldn't have that kind of a uh, risk. So I'm not sure why they put the O-ring on top like that. There are very, in scuba diving, there's very few things that seal like that, where it's just on top and then you have a screw that goes on top, keeping everything in place. So if you take a look at, you know, just the Hero 4, you can see how thick this O-ring is, keeping a seal compared to this tiny little O-ring here. 
So you have all this leeway here, creating a seal. And that's a lot of surface area between on the seal and on the case. And this is very, very small when compared to this case. And I know there's nothing quite like the Osmo pocket, like the form factor for cameras, but you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's almost like a flashlight you're, that you're pointing at things you want to film. So why don't they, why doesn't DJI make it like a flashlight? Like, so this is a, this is a flashlight that I got from D, uh, Dive Gear Express. And the way they created this housing over here is rather than create, put the O-rings on top of here where it can be loosened or like, you know, if you get hit or like it unscrews a little bit, it'll just flood. They actually put three O-rings and seven threads on here. And the O-rings are oriented, you know, this way instead of on top. And I think they did this because, well, number one, this is like a screw, um, screw flashlight where um, like to turn it on, you have to screw it on and off a little bit. But like with all those O-rings, you have a lot of leeway. So even if one doesn't keep this water tight, the other two most definitely will. And you can see this is, this design is actually carried on for like so many different things in scuba diving, um, especially for, you know, more robust, um, gear, like, um, my Shearwater, um, Perdix, that's a dive computer. Um, you have like a little coin, um, slot where you can twist it. And then, um, you pull this little plug out and it has also two O-rings oriented in this exact configuration, keeping the water out. And you also have that with, um, like on uh, canister lights. So this is a canister light battery for a Halcyon Focus. And you can see kind of the same design here. You have the threads and then you have these massive O-rings keeping the water out. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't even matter if there's like a piece of dust or something on that, it's not gonna flood because you have multiple O-rings and you have a ridiculous amount of threads keeping that pressure on top. Like this thing is not gonna, this thing is not gonna come loose from the head of the light. It's just, there's just no way. Like, I'll just show you real quick. Once you screw this on during a dive, it is absolutely impossible for this thing to come off. Like, like there's, there's just no way. And I think DJI could learn a thing about this and make their next housing a lot like this. Because I don't think this plus a ring system like this, where it can get so loose without you even noticing, especially with like this contour here, is gonna cut it over time. And actually, I the reason why my Osmo Pocket is not with me right now is because this unit actually flooded on my last technical dive. So um, I saw a little bit of moisture here and I unscrewed the unit, which was actually loose, even though I tightened it um, right before the dive. And I noticed about a centimeter, or sorry, well, maybe like a millimeter of water at the bottom of here, but that was enough to kill the unit. Um, the camera was toast, but, um, you know, I knew that DJI, their bread and butter is drones, not underwater housings. 
So I bought the Osmo Shield uh, warranty, so I'm gonna get a new unit and uh, no extra cost. But yeah, I think DJI, they really need to step up their housing game. I know this guy has been delayed quite a while, but um, I think they should really improve this system if they want a more robust system. Because this thing is just not going to cut it. Like, there's just so many times where this thing can just come loose. And I think this actually came loose because of, um, uh, it like floated up upwards and it was like knocking against my, um, I had it clipped onto my um, D ring on my back plate. And this thing was just like knocking around a little bit, um, probably because I was on a DPV. Um, that's like a underwater scooter. And I was going like full bore sometimes, um, just to like catch up on some areas of the dive. Um, it was a pretty good turn. So yeah, um, I know this thing is not gonna cut it. So yeah, DJI, if you're watching, which you probably aren't, but um, hopefully they get the attention, or this video has the attention of at least somebody from DJI uh, someday. Um, they could really improve this system and make it more like an established system, like these lights um, that are absolutely bulletproof in terms of water resistance. So yeah, this is my review of the DJ DJI Osmo Pocket. Um, it's pretty good for low light, but um, yeah, some other things are uh, remain to be desired. So yeah, thanks for watching, bye.